Hey everyone, welcome to She Devils United. Um, how is everyone doing? Happy Friday, folks. Hope it's not been too painful given last night's uh, result and with the impending game at the weekend. Uh, looks like Ineos are back in Eric Ten Hag, certainly through the Athletic and publicly today. Ineos back Eric Ten Hag. Loads of briefings from Laurie Whitwell. We will talk about them all. We will talk about what they mean. Uh, an update on Jason Wilcox as well. Looks like he is imminent. Uh, updates from Romano and uh, Mail on Sport as well. Looks like he's joining as a technical director. What does that mean for Darren Fletcher? Um, we'll wait and see. An update on and good news today. I bring some good news. Now, it hasn't actually happened yet. But again, it came from Laurie Whitwell. It looks like... Um, John Murtaugh is going to be given his marching orders. John Murtaugh sacked, hasn't been made official yet, but it is likely that once we get in the new structure, once we get in Dan Ashworth and the cup and Jason Wilcox, it looks like uh, John Murtaugh, who initially they were thought was would be given a new role, it looks like he will be relieved of his duties, not before time music to my ears. So we will we'll talk about all the stuff behind the scenes. Um, we're going to talk about uh, uh, how we feel about Eric Ten Hag because it looks like Ineos are backing him. Uh, I, I, I got a lot of stuff to say in it. I got a lot. I got to talk with some of the quotes from Eric Ten Hag too yesterday because oh my god, <laughs> oh my god. Um, we we we'll talk about them as well. Um, and uh, uh looks like Casemiro could be injured. Uh, Ten Hag came out last night and said he was taken off. Not because he stank Stamford Bridge out, like all of us said, and he, he was one of the worst players on the pitch, but actually he was injured. So if he hadn't been injured, Ten Hag would have left him on, basically, is what he's saying. Uh, but we will talk about that. How is everyone doing? I was going to get alcohol, guys, um, but I said I'm not letting Man United tonight anyway drive me to drink. I might save it until Sunday. Hope everyone is doing well. What's your Friday night tip? And let me know. Evening, Ten Hag in Rashford out says Mean Keen. Shout out to Michael who's in. Ineos has bottled the Ashford deal. And when back in Ten Hag just goes to show they are clueless. Clueless Mary, who would be your favourite to replace Ten Hag? Um, it would be Ruben, Ruben Amron. I did see Paul tag me in the Nagelsman stuff. We have been linked tonight to Julian Nagelsman and Garrett Soke. It's coming from... Um, I pay for sport guys, they're not the most credible. Um, I don't want Julian Nagelsman. I can sit here right now and I say I don't want him. I absolutely do not want him. I think he's a complete nutter fraud. Uh, people will say, you know, Mary won stuff at Bayern. I could win stuff at Bayern Munich. He's done nothing before that at, at, at Leipzig and has done nothing since. Uh, uh, to be honest, I think he's a massive, massive fraud, Nagelsman. I don't really want him. I don't like the way he plays football. I don't like his personality uh he's very very kind of like eric ten hag he reminds me of him and the way they play and stuff not for me nagelsman is an absolute no for me no 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 um i know before i used to say i didn't want hansy flick but given how bad it is at man united right now i mean he, he certainly is an option um so you know there are options out there i don't think we should just stick with the manager just because you know we think there are no options um there's there's a world of managers out there some of them in south america some of them in other leagues that we don't really necessarily know there's another guy was he miguel um is he a girona he's another one potentially could be someone that we could look at first uh, of respectfully, Man United is not going to win the Champions League or the Premier League in the next 100 years. It's kind of a delusional performance. Zero control, awful passing and lack of urgency. Um, Ratcliffe wants, he does want uh, Gareth Soke. Yeah, uh, sorry Mary, until Ineos officially say something about Ten Hag, I don't believe anything said by another journalist. F f that's, Jean, that's your opinion. Of course, you're entitled to it. Um, me, I'm taking this. It came from Larry Whitwell from The Athletic. Um, they are very, very credible. Adam Crafton was the one that was bringing all of the... Uh, uh, kind of the INEA stuff during all of the sale of Man United. Um, when Mike Keegan was bringing stuff from the Daily Mail, I do tend to believe this. I do tend to think they are very, very credible. Laurie Whitwell never really comes out unless he's been briefed on something. That's just my opinion. But Gene, of course, if you don't want to believe it, you're totally entitled to think that. Ineos are just being, being diplomatic. Ten Hag is gone at the end of the season, says Don. We haven't been going forward since last season, to be honest. Teams are performing this season. It's exposing Ten Hag as a fraud. He was never that good last season. Anyway, yeah, last season was a bit of a false dawn because let's be honest here, um, we could count 
done one handy amount of good games Man United played last season we said that a lot we were picking up results certainly we won a cup we finished in the top four there was positive signs you know there was discipline there was a structure that you know there was definite positive signs but the football was dross um the, the Barcelona games home and away, certainly the one at the New Camp and, and the win at Old Trafford and the Tottenham game, those are the only performances off the top of my head, guys. All the other performances, there was 20 minutes, a half an hour, maybe a 45. And a lot of the signs that we're now seeing a lot more of this season consistently, you know, the, the lack of character, the lack of really bad mentality, being able to hold on to a lead, no real style of play, you know, no real tactical, the in-game management, the poor substitutes, all of that that we saw last season but was papered over the cracks by some of the wins and some of the results. Really, we're not seeing that this season, so they are have been massively more exposed. And I think last season was a bit of a false dawn. Um, Ollie 2.0, I feel, says Chris. Um Shout out to Liz. Good evening, Mary. Every hello, everyone. Hope everyone is good on the evening. England ladies versus Sweden half time. Shout out to Liz. Shout out to Mary Long. Um, shout out to Mosh. You, you can be Eric Ten Hag, guys. I said it last night's stream. I've no issue with anyone who, who's Eric Ten still Eric Ten Hag in. I, I, it baffles me in a way, but I have no issue because I understand um, that you know there aren't huge. You know, the, the perfect manager, I, I don't think he exists for Man United anyway. Who is it? If there is no obvious choice. And, you know, we've done this for 11 years and there are a lot of, a lot of other factors that we have to take into account than just Eric Ten Hag. But at 17 defeats this season, you cannot ignore um, that last season, this season, it's really not been good, guys. What we thought we were getting in Eric Ten Hag is what he said himself. He will never be able to instill at Man United playing Ajax football and dominant football, the Ajax way. Um, and, and, you know, that amazing win percentage that I don't even think Pep Guardiola could, could uh, you know, replicate at in the Premier League because that was in the Dutch League, but certainly way better than what we were talking thought we were going to get. And the man himself admitted he would never be able to do that at Man United. So, you know, I think a lot of us were really fooled. Um, shout out to the Mangalore. And I think a lot of us as well, you know, after Ollie and Rangnick, we were desperate. We were like desperate, you know, so you could then convince yourself like that, you know, this is what we need. It's going to change. And then you want to be positive because you're sick of being negative as well. Um, you know, so, but uh, a lot of us were conned, including myself. Effin Rashford is shameless. One man mission to derail us knocks me sick. I don't think it's just him. Um, He's a damning indictment of where we are. He should be nowhere near the squad, in my opinion. Do I think it's all on him? No. Do I think as well it's all on Bruno? No. Um, there, there are very, very few Man United players that can hold their heads high this season and come up with any real credibility. Um. Dallow probably being one despite last night's dreadful performances. I think he's been, and the start of the season, I don't think he was very good, but he had a spell in between of, of, of certainly uh, maybe two months-ish. Um, some people were saying he was our player of the year. No, D Johnny Evans, I think, despite the injuries, has been solid. Maguire has been decent, but I, I, I've not been overly enamoured with Harry Maguire's performances overall either. They've been okay. They've been better than what they were. Uh, the obvious ones are the three kids, Mainu, Hoyland and Garnacho. Certainly Mainu and Garnacho and Hoyland had that little bit of in between, the spell in between the, the, the poor spell and now his injury and just returning to fitness now. So really overall... I mean, Garnacho has had poor games and Manu, you know, he was injured for a lot. He's only just come in. Is there anyone who's played well all season long for Man United? No. So, you know, uh, 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 well, I think Rashford's behaviour and his mentality and his body language um, has been, I do agree, it's been shame, it's shameful this season. Um, and I think he needs to be sold and he would be the first one I would sell. Uh, I, I, I think it's a bit short-sighted to blame it just on him. Minus one goal difference is sickening. If United, shout out to Ilias, who's back in, get crack it, I will quit this club forever. Please not soak it. This can't happen. Well, I think Eric Ten Hag has outstayed his tenure. There is actually nobody out there I want in, but there needs to be change regardless. That That's kind of where I stand to. I would take Ruben Amaran. I would probably take Hansi Flick. You know, were either of them 
the, my two choices, not really. But, you know, um, I do like the idea of, of Amaron. Uh, but, you know, I agree with Trev. It's got to be changed regardless of who we think should come in. Shout out to Claire, who is a back in. Nagelsman is who I would take, but Soket is the heavy favourite. Guys, uh, if you think it it can't get any worse, and we hire Gareth Soket, trust me, because I'm old enough to remember Gareth Soket when he was the Middlesbrough manager, and people might go, well, Mary, you know, that was his first job, and it was like years ago, I know he's had all this experience. Do you know how, how, how di different it is to be a league manager than a Premier League man, or sorry, a league manager to an international manager? It's not even remotely the same. It's not even remotely the same. We've seen Hansi Flick at, at Bayern and we've seen him at Germany. Guys, it, 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 like, it, it's a world of a difference. Um, he's an absolute fraud. Um, I don't believe Ineos won Ten Hag. I am genuinely petrified of the way score coming. I love Man United. And honestly, uh, I, I, I never backed, I don't back this Ineos ownership anyway. Um, I've got a lot of question marks over it. I've got a lot of reservations over it. Um, you know, but at the same time, I've no choice but to hope, hope um, that they can do something. But if they bring in Soket, guys, honestly, I would have preferred Ayrton Hag showed signs of a rebuild if it meant. Yeah, I said that today, you know, I was watching a shout out to Flex and KG on the United View because I was watching. They, they had a match reaction where the two of them were. I mean, Flex was over KG. It, it was great to watch. Um. But but like flex when when I was watching it I was actually shouting <laughs> at KG and 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 I, and I love KG but I was saying like I mean if we saw any signs of any positivity whatsoever I I, I would be saying you know don't sack him just yet but there's none there's actually no there's no positives in my, just for me I speak for myself I'm sure there'll be people who don't want to get rid of the manager that you know can find some positives. I just can't see any, like we could say Manu or Garnacho, but again, you know, they're young players, they're developing, they've had poor games, they've had games where they've not been influential, is that down to Ten Hag? Maybe not, but I mean, last night, guys, the tactics and the lack of them, it was it, it was so evident, it was embarrassing, and some of the post-match comments are just, guys, they're off the wall, like, they're actually off the wall. Um would rather watch Paintry than listen to Soak It. Oh, my God. Ten Hag should have been gone at Christmas last year. Some people, I remember when we lost to Liverpool 7-0, some people said to sack him. Um, some people have been Ten Hag out since then. I'd rather take Oli back. I, I actually would. I'd rather take David Moyes back. I would rather take Ollie back. I would rather take Jose back. I would rather take Van Hal back. And I'm not even joking, guys. I really would. Arteta had a shit start, but we need to get rid of the Deadwood. Uh, Ahsoka is as average as Ollie. Shout out to Drana. All of us in Jamaica are Man United fans suffering. Um, we're all in it together, guys. Shout out to everyone in the chat. Please subscribe, guys, if you are new. Please like the video as well. I'm you have been Tenago for a long, long time, Elias. I'm taking a hate. I'm taking a hiatus. He's done nothing. Um, shout out to Claire. And nothing is going to change at this club. I don't believe in Ineos. Let, let, let's get into it, okay? So, Laurie Whitwell, very credible. The athletic journalist came out and said, Ineos would like to stick with Eric Ten Hag and he would like to stay at Man United. Obviously, he's on, you know, is it 12 million a year? I don't even know. Um, <laughs> there's a first time for everything. Um, I don't even know um, how much Eric Ten Hag is on a year. I think he's the third highest paid manager in the Premier League. 10 to 12 million. It's in double figures, guys. Of course, Eric Ten Hag wants to keep his job at Man United because nobody else is going to pay him that type of money. And after what he's done at Man United, I fear that he probably would struggle to get a job at a, a club as big as Man United or as, you know, somewhere in that stature as Man United. Um, so Laurie Whitwell saying, Ineos would like to stick with Eric Ten Hag. He would like to stay. There has been a good sense of collaboration and discuss discussions between Ten Hag and Sir David Brailsford and Sir Jim Radcliffe. So Whitwell saying, Ten Hag wants to stay. 
Ineos want to keep them and there's been kind of a good rapport, discussions, etc. between them all. Trev says, Mary can't believe I made it into the members chat list. There you go. You're one of the elite now, Trev. You're one of the elite. So Laurie goes on to say, Laurie Whipple, several figures at my United Field 10 Hag deserves the chance to operate in a new structure populated by people whom Sir Jim Radcliffe and Brailsford regard as the best in class. No, I've seen this argument with, you know, a lot of Ten Hag, people who are one Ten Hag to stay, they back the manager, they want to keep him, they want to see him get a chance under Ineos and Brailsford and Ashworth and Wilcox and whoever comes in under the new football and structure. Their thing is, one of their reasons why they want to keep him is really he's been the manager under the Glazers, under John Murtaugh, under this failed ownership, this failed board. Really, he was, you know, set up to fail anyway. He never really stood a chance. In a way, I can see why they would say that. I can see their point of view. I can. I can absolutely see their point of view. And they do have a point. I mean, he's had John Murtaugh and Darren Fletcher and Joel and Avram Glazer. You know, how did we ever think the man was going to succeed, you know? But at the same time, we thought, you know, we had Ed Woodward playing football manager with this club, thinking it was FIFA football manager buying these fucking Galacticos, running the club, not having a clue. Then we got John Murta, who we thought was going to be a football director, and we got Darren Fletcher, and we were t- sold a lie that, you know, the new way we, we, we were going about it and we're going to have a new football structure at Man United and it was going to be, and then that didn't work. So then... A lot of us, when Ten Hag came in, he wanted control over the, the signings, the transfers, the football side, the you know all of that stuff. So it was 50% Ten Hag and 50% John Marto. And a lot of us, we wanted that. And that has failed as well. Now, some people would say, you know, that's it's John Marto. But you can't just, as much as I despise John Marto, and I like nothing more than to fucking blame him, guys, we can't really sit here and go, it's all on him. You know, it's all on Avram and Joel. It's all on... It, Ten Hag has to share some responsibility too. 50% of the signings are on him. And let's be honest, can we sit here and be real for a second? And I'm not just talking about the signings, because some of the decisions that this football club has made in in totality have been dog shit, let's be honest. Some of the players we signed, not just who we signed, but the fees we paid for them. Of course, that isn't down to Ten Hag. It's down to, um, it was Matt Judge, Matt Hargreaves and John Murtaugh. Richard Arnold had a hand in all of that too. Went to Barcelona for Frankie de Jong, didn't get him. I, I, I mean, it, it, you know, we, we know who was at fault here. Uh, none of them lay blameless here. But at the same time, look at the players that we signed and you only have to look, most of them have a link to Eric Ten Hag. I don't believe John Murtaugh was picking these players. I think it was Ten Hag. So then when John Murtaugh did his homework, and I use that in inverted commas, because, I mean, he didn't do his background on, on a lot of players. Like, I mean, he didn't do a background on uh, Marco Aronovic. He didn't do a background on... on um, a uh, 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 Jaden Sancho. He hasn't done a background on a lot of these fucking players, let's be honest. Um so when I say John Murtaugh then went and did his homework and then agreed with Eric Ten Hag, that man is an absolute bluffer. So in actual fact, I think Ten Hag is picking most of these signings. John Murtaugh is going, yeah, let me see what, what's in my database on all of these players, what the scouts say, what I've accumulated. And then he's just, he's a bluffer, guys. He's a charlatan. So then he's taking a couple of weeks and then he's like having another meet with Eric Ten Hag going, yeah, okay, we'll go with him. Because most of the signings besides Casemiro and besides Hoyland have no direct link to Eric Ten Hag. I'm not counting the loan players here. I'm talking about the, the, the players we signed on permanent deals. It doesn't take a genius, okay? So, um, you know, while we know a lot of the stuff above Ten Hag, it needs to change. I'm going to say not even a lot of the stuff above Ten Hag. All of the stuff above Ten Hag needs to change. It needs to change and it needs to change. And until it does, we're going to be sitting here again in 10 years time and it's going to be wash, rinse, repeat. So I can understand people would say, give him another chance under a new footballing structure with Dana, with a proper football director, a proper one, and not just a name, but a competent one. Um, Again, you know, get a proper technical director, Jason Wilcox, got experience, was the football director 
at Southampton, was a technical director at Manchester City, you know, was over their academy and so had proper um, footballing experience. Some people would say John Murtaugh did, um, you know, he was with the FA, he was with the Premier League, he was with Everton for a long, long time. However, he was never, he had no experience of being a football director. Um, so, you know, I, 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 I don't count his previous experience at Everton and the Premier League and stuff. Um, so I get why people would say that, but to me, I just, I think this season has been so bad that there's just no way back for him. You, you just cannot forgive some of the the, the, the the stuff that is, you know, gone on with Eric Ten Hag. However, people who say, give him a chance and let's see what he can do under a new structure, I I can see why people would want to do that. I don't, I don't agree with those who want to do that, but I can see why they do. So Laurie Whitwell says the influence that he, that Ten had previously uh, uh, was because he felt the environment wasn't right and he needed to put himself more so. So they're talking, Laurie there is talking about in terms of transfers and stuff like that, the decisions that the manager was making that really a sporting director should be making or a competent football director. Ten Hag was doing that because he didn't feel we had the really the necessities to be able to do that. Um, with people he feels confident in, he will accept a head coach role. So basically they're saying Ten Hag will accept to be the head coach of Man United if he gets Ashworth, Jason Wilcox, Omar Barad and a proper football and structure in. He will relinquish that control and he will work under that football and structure. The issue is, and we all know, when new owners come in, do they want their own man? 99% of the time they do. Does Dan Ashworth want to work with Eric Ten Hag? Does he believe that Eric Ten Hag's football and philosophy matches him? I don't believe it It will, guys. I genuinely, I don't believe it will. However, it's very, very interesting that Laurie Whitwell from The Athletic is coming out and saying, Ineos so far back Ten Hag. Because realistically, I'm not sure what that they would gain from leaking that today. You know, you could say if Man United were still in a top four, race or top Champions League positions that they wouldn't kind of want to rock the boat behind the scenes so they would brief that to just give him a little bit of false security you know brief out that yeah we, we're, we back him and all that so you know behind the scenes the players aren't you know it, it gives some sense of security why we can try and get Champions League football but we're not getting fifth um Champions League football is gone so uh, I'm a bit perplexed by the brief I, I, I don't understand why um you know, why uh, that was briefed out today if there wasn't some truth in it. I, I, I just don't know. Shout out to Mosh, who's been a member for five months. A legend of the chat, Mosh. Someone needs to make United a club again. They certainly bloody do. Will it be Ineos? Will it be Dan Ashworth? Will it be Sir Jim Radcliffe? Will it be Ten Hag? Um, because... Laurie Whitwell goes on to say, and the good news today, the one good news I'm taking from today, because I would have blown, I would have blown a gasket, guys, more so than I did in last night's match reaction, because that was the angriest I was in a, in, a, in a match reaction in a long, long time. Um, <laughs> uh, <laughs> that was, you know, shout out to everyone who watched. Um, but uh, the one positive I will take, and I would have. Oh, my head would have exploded if this didn't happen. Laurie Whitwell has further went on to say, football director John Murto is set to leave Manchester United. No people will go Mary Dot. Like, I mean, we were bringing the national, but there was rumblings and rumours from, they were coming from um, Samuel Luckers. They were coming from The Athletic not that long ago that there was a lot of rumours that John Murtaugh would be staying in another role. They would find another role for him. He was popular behind the scenes. Ineos liked him um, <clears throat> and he would be kept on behind the scenes. And I was worried that that was actually going to happen. And Laurie Whitwell today said no. It's football director John Murtaugh is set to leave Manchester United. Murtaugh exit is set to be confirmed once the hires in the structural side are confirmed. So Laurie is saying, once we get Ashworth, once we get Jason Wilcox in, once we get them confirmed, he's going to go. Now, personally, should we wait until then? You know, probably given the way the, the Ashworth stuff is rumbling on and it's been delayed. Um, I know we didn't do that with... with um, Richard Arnold, but we had a kind of deputy to step in, and I'm not sure Man United would have one. Although I would say a clown a, 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 or a monkey dressed in a suit could do um, John Murtaugh's job right now. 
but apparently Ineos don't believe so. So they're going to wait until they get Ashworth and they get. Um, my worry is that if Ashworth has to serve out a certain amount of garden and leave, and then we don't have um, him in by the time the transfer window opens in the summer, because let's be honest, it's April, the transfer window is opening in two months' time. Um, and if we don't have him in, then I fear that we could be stuck with John Murtaugh in a transitional period of time, and that's the fear. But that that's what happens when, you know, your owners, both 25% minority owners and the current owners, they don't have, we don't have a lot of money, so they're penny-pinching. Um, John Murtaugh has been scapegoated. Boy, are you in fucking cuckoo land. John Murtaugh has been the football director since 2021 and has been an abject fucking failure. And I can't believe you're in here with your fucking full chest. I don't know if you're looking for a reaction or a rise, but boy, you're sniffing fucking glue. You're as Delulu as Eric Ten Hag because tell me how he's been scapegoated because Man United have got fundamentally worse since he took the job. They've been worse, my guy. So in what way has he been scapegoated? He's been an abject fucking failure. I would also like to say he came in in 2013 with David Moyes. And when did Man United fall a fucking part, my guy? 20 fucking 13. I don't know if you've been in a coma since Sir Alex Ferguson retired. But it's no surprise that John Murtaugh came from Everton with David Moyes. And has overstayed his welcome, became the head of recruitment and then the head of the fucking academy and then frauded his way to be the fucking director of football when he's had no experience as the director of football. He was out there on a European tour showing his stupid fucking face in Barcelona trying to sign Frankie de Jong when me, Stevie Wonder, Andrew Pacelli and Ray Charles combined could see we weren't going to fucking sign him. And he was out there like the mug that he is. And did we sign Frankie de Jong? No. That fucking prick was bidding for Marco Aronovich and the whole of fucking Twitter had to school John Murta into telling him what a racist cunt that Marco Aronovich is. And as the football director, he didn't even know that. He didn't even know he was bidding officially for a player who was banned for multiple racial insults. And you're in here telling me he's a scapegoat. No, my guy. He's made Man United an even more laughing stock than we already are. And the fact you're in here with your full chest defending him, boy, I ain't got time for you. Get out of here. Don't play with me today. Uh, don't play with me. Do we know how much financial fair play room we have in the summer? No idea. There's a lot of mixed kind of stuff about that. Marto is a joke, a fraud, an absolute dinosaur when it comes to trying. I I mean, imagine coming in with your full chest after that. After Tweedledee and Tweedledum, the fucking Chockle brothers themselves, were out in Barcelona, him and that mug, Richard Arnold, and came away like the fucking morons that they are, making us look like absolute idiots. Um, it's absolutely embarrassing for Man United fans. Mary, for this United is failing. Uh, you have deluded fans. And my worry is penny pinching might mean we keep Eric Ten Hag. He'll only have one year left in his deal. To get rid of him will be whatever to pay out his contract around 10 to 12 million. Uh, it will only happen as a fluke. So it looks like John Murta is going to go. Now, Laurie goes on to say there had been a loose proposal. So there had been an actual proposal by Man United that he could continue to work in a reduced role, in a different role. But all parties know except a clean separation must make sense. That fucking fraud has got to go. That dumb, dumb ass. Because that is the most polite thing I can call him because he is a fucking cockroach, John Murtaugh. And he has got to go. Boy, I would be, it would be Ed Stark. Ed Stark sentence with me if I was in Yoss and Brailsford in there. If you know, you know. Ed Stark sentence. Ned Stark, not Ed Stark. Ned Stark. I'm thinking Ed Woodward. Ned fucking Stark sentence, boy. And I would stick your head in the fucking, uh, 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 on the, the railings outside Old Trafford. So you're lucky you'd be getting your P45 and a payoff. Um, because, oh my God. So good news, guys. Lighten my mood a little bit today. Not completely. 
but lightened the mood a little bit. But I just want to go back to the stuff about, you know, Ten Hag and Ineos wanting to keep him. And I do want to touch on last night because, you know, it's still raw in there, you know. We we can't ignore, we can't even, even with the briefings today, uh, you know, about Nigelsman and Southgate and uh, ten, Ineos want to keep Ten Hag and Wilcox and, you know, all of these people. Um, Murta, guys, i got to go through some of the stats uh, with Man United right now. Man, it's the first time since 1989-1990 that Manchester United have lost 17 games in a single season. Uh, you know, if, if, if people want to to ask why I, I, I want the manager gone, uh, it's the first time since 1989-1990 that Man United have lost 17 games in one season. 17. 17. Not seven. 17. 17 games is almost half of a Premier League season. It's almost half. Uh, so we've lost 17 games, almost half our Premier, you know, it, obviously not they weren't obviously all Premier League games but it's the equivalent of losing half your Premier League games that you play in a league across fucking nine months um, and, and it's only April we've still got all of April fixtures and March and, and May fixtures to go through it's absolutely shocking guys shocking Man United were leading last night's game in the nearly the 100 minute 99 Point one seven um minutes. Okay, the latest a side has ever led in a Premier League match that they have went on and lost. And I, I have, I, I mean, I kind of have half fucking given up my fancy Premier League because honestly. The amount of players that didn't play for me this week was a, a travesty. I keep forgetting to change it, but shout out to, to Kev. I'll try and change it later on. Um, so Man United are the, a team that have led in a game the latest time in Premier League history that have not gone on to win the fucking game, that have gone on and lost uh, the game. Yeah, 17 fucking hag. Uh, oh, my God. Uh, while we are all talking about the staff and the surroundings, it's the, the players, guys. Even though I'm Eric Ten Hag out, and I am, I still, st I've said this, even when I was Eric Ten Hag in during this season, up until that Nottingham Forest game, and I was saying I would get rid of all of these players before I would get rid of the manager, uh, and I stand by that. I would get rid of, except for, the, we know the four players, guys, uh, the three first teamers and Ama Diallo. They are the only f four players I'm keeping. I've changed my mind on Martinez. I'm not keeping him either. I you can disagree with me in the chat. Fuck off. He's injury prone, okay? Um, so uh, I'm keeping Manu, Garnacho, Hoyland and Ahmad because Ahmad hasn't been given a chance. All of the rest of the players can go and fuck themselves. It is a hard go and fuck yourselves. Um. So I would get rid of all of them. They are, it is, they are, it is, guys, I've said everything I can say about these players, but I agree with Trev and it should be mentioned on the stream because I know there'll be people saying, what about the players? What about the players? I mean, you only have to watch all the streams I've done this season, all the match reactions to know what I feel about these players. They're not even worthy of being called Man United players. You know, it, it just is what it is. So they all need to go. Um, but, but, you know, Man United need, and I, and I can understand that we can't do it. You, know, you can't get rid of 30 first team players, your manager, all your coaches, all your football instructor. I would burn Man United down to the ground and just rebuild it from scratch. Tear the rubble and rebuild it from the start. And unfortunately, that's what needs to happen. Um, when you've been decayed and neg neglected for 11 years, that's kind of what happens, guys. And even before that, Fergie was papering over the cracks long, long, long before that. Um, Man United, I, I do want to talk about the shots Man United conceded on goal because I talked about it in a couple of previous streams. I mentioned I was infuriated with Eric Ten Hag's comments that it wasn't an issue. I addressed it again last night and I want to talk about there's a lot of stats coming out today and he's talked about it in the post-match as well. So that's where I come to on this. So Man United have faced 59 shots on goal in the last two games conceded 20, sorry, 59, almost 60 shots on our goal in the last two games alone. We played Brentford and a Chelsea team that were 12th. They're now 10th. One of the worst Chelsea teams I've seen in, in 20 odd years. Um, who, who Burnley, a 10 men Burnley held them at Stamford Bridge to a draw. Um, 
and, and and we conceded 28 shots and we conceded 59 shots in two games against Chelsea and Brentford. Manchester United conceded 109 shots in our last four Premier League games. 109. And the only good team out of that that we played is Man City. Um, more shots conceded in Europe's top five leagues. Manchester United have conceded the third highest the third highest shot in Europe's top five leagues. Man United are third. At least we're third in something because it's not for goals scored or points on the table or wins or trophies or anything like that. So at least we're third somewhere at the third highest shot a team has faced um, in Europe's top five leagues. Man United are third. Five 106 shots Man United have faced on our goal. We've conceded on our goal. 506. The only two teams that have faced more in Europe's top five leagues. Sheffield United and Luton Town. And where are both those teams? In the fucking relegation zone in the Premier League. It's an absolute embarrassment, guys. It's an absolute embarrassment. Uh, in Europe's top five leagues, if you go through all of those leagues and you think of the teams in the relegation zone in the Bundesliga, the teams in the relegation zone in, in La Liga, in the French League, in the Italian League, they they haven't even conceded that amount of shots that Man United have had conceded on our goal. Um, and Eric Ten Hag again was asked about it last night in the post-match interview. And it, uh, uh, he was asked about facing over 500 shots on our goal. And he said, it is ridiculous. Well, at least you, you've acknowledged that it's ridiculous because you've been not, you've been, you know, playing it down. We showed we are fourth ranking goals in conceded and everyone is talking to each other after. We, we are good. We have good defending as a team and a good goalkeeper, so I cannot do nothing. Uh, I'm just going to repeat that, guys. So Ten Hag acknowledges that it's ridiculous. They're all talking about it. It is an issue. So he's finally acknowledging that the 506 shots we faced on our goal this season is a problem. But he says we are good. Uh, maybe that's because English isn't his first language. I, I don't know how to interpret that. We have good defending as a team. No, we don't, because if we defended good as a team, we wouldn't have conceded 506 shots on our goal. We wouldn't have a minus goal difference if we were good at defending as a team. Because let's be honest, I mean, the defence has been shit this season, and it has, but our midfield... Oh, my God, the wingers as well. We don't defend well as a team. A boy, what are you talking about? And then he said, we have a good goalkeeper. I'm not even going to fucking even go there. Ten Hag needs to go back and, and watch last night's fucking first goal that we conceded. That's all I'll say on that one. Uh, and then the most damning thing in that statement is Eric Ten Hag says, I cannot do nothing. Now, that's the direct quote. I cannot do anything. So he's saying, I can't really do anything about it. We're talking about it. We've got a good defence. We've got a good goalkeeper. There's nothing I can do about it. So you're telling me Eric, that you're being paid £12 million pounds a year to be the Manchester United manager and you can so solve the glaringly obvious issue um, in our team that is clearly a tactical issue with the team. You're telling me you can solve it, you can't do anything about it when your literal fucking job is to find a solution to the problems within this team. I mean, uh, has the man given up? Because it seems like he's given up. Um, because, like, if you're saying you can't solve it, then why, 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 why are you here? Why, why haven't you put in your P45 and left? Or you're, you're putting it, your resignation, resign. Um, I, I just don't understand. He doesn't cover himself in glory, but the thought of soak it terrifies me. I'd rather keep Ten Hag than soak it. He needs to haul his ass. Like, like I mean, uh, he said, I can't do nothing with those stats. Not that's any better. Okay, fair enough. Um, He can't do... Well, I mean, saying I can't do anything about the stats really means 
he can't do anything about it because those are the stats. The stats are we faced 506 shots. So really he's saying I can't do anything about the 506 shots we faced. So essentially it's the same thing. Really to me. Um <sighs> Resigning only means he get yeah, no manager will resign. We had a great goalkeeper and you let him go. Facts. Facts. Sounds like Everton had smoking crack. Um, he doesn't yeah, I read that one from Claire. Oh Nana is crap. I'm better than him. The man's a buzzing menu in the middle on his own. Yeah. And and that's tactical. No structure in place on the field. Varane is made of weed of X. Player power is that lazy English hype player. Rashford, I hear talk, keeps shots away from your goal. Yeah. And uh, no more bald. Manager, shout out to Mad Hatter, who's in. Um, look, Tenag also went on to say, oh, guys, I know I don't want to be, you know, I, you're, you're kind of going, Mary, you're moaning, and it's like, you know, but I mean, after 17 defeats out this season, guys, uh, Someone last night stream was telling me to be positive. Fucking hell. Give me a, you know, I, 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 at this stage, I'd need like some like uppers and LST and all the drugs and the f calling fucking uh, Heisenberg because that's who I'd need <laughs> uh, right now to get any bit of semblance of positivity. But Ten Hag further went on to say, um, no, again, I do, to be fair, like to be fair, he can't come up and be like, well, I, I, I personally, I would, I probably would have more respect for him if he did. But you know, the snowflakes would be crying that he's criticizing the team, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But at the same time, I mean, uh, there's a way you can say things without, you know, literally blasting your players if that's what you, you know, if you're trying to still protect them because they're not out here protecting you, my guy. Um, Ten Hag went on to say, I enjoyed how my team were playing. Moving on. Uh, it was fantastic. Oh, I don't think I'm in the fucking real world, guys. Then he went on to say, we dominated the ball. We dominated the opponent. Uh, I, I'm, I'm so tired, guys. Uh, uh, honestly, I'm, I'm so tired. I'm fucking drained. Um, this is just embarrassing. It, it, it really is embarrassing. I would prefer the manager to not come out and do a post-match interview and just take the fine. Just let the FA fine you for not doing post-match interviews, my guy, because I just aren't. This is just what is what even is this? You enjoy you enjoyed watching the team, you enjoyed how we were playing. With literally no midfield and wide open and playing counter attack and football, and then he said we dominated the ball, we dominated the opponent. Chelsea had fifty seven percent possession, Man United had forty three percent possession. They had over one hundred and twenty passes more than Man United. They had nine shots more on goal than we did, and they had five more on target than we did. They had twelve corners and we had three. So, so when Eric Ten Hag says we dominated the opponent, we dominated the ball. We they literally had more, way more possession than us. Fifty seven percent possession, more corners, more shots on goal, and more shots on target. How did we dominate them, and how did we dominate the ball? I mean, literally, you think we're, we're idiots? Like you think we're speaking to fucking idiots? They more they, Chelsea were the better side last night, even though they're still shit. Like, but but you're he's absolutely delusional. He's delusional, guys. Uh, that's all I can say. Um, he's absolutely delusional. I would prefer him to just not come out and speak uh, uh, and just take the fine. Just take the fines because, uh, honestly, you know, we're getting embarrassed on the pitch and then you're embarrassing us off the pitch by the shit that you're coming out with. Like, just please spare me. Just spare me. I'd rather you actually ripped into the players. I would prefer that if you came out and said they were the biggest bunch of frauds and common and bums that you would ever seen, and then you individualize them and absolutely rinse them. I would prefer, I would actually enjoy that. People would cry over that. Oh, 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 oh he's calling them for. I would love that. I would be injecting that into my veins, a bit like Ralph Rangnick was doing. He was exposing them all. He was shooting shots because they were shooting them back at him. But I enjoy that. I liked the honesty. This is, this is, pathetic from Ten Hag. It's absolutely pathetic. Um, 
but that is the, the, the I did want to touch on them because I, I just I can't take any more um, from Tin Hag and I did want to touch on that but we'll move on because I do want to talk about the Wilcox stuff um, and we'll move on to Jason Wilcox so it looks like Jason Wilcox to Man United is imminent uh, Mail on Sports say Southampton manager Russell Martin has confirmed that Jason Wilcox is likely to move to Manchester United so the Saints manager confirming that their current director he's actually been put on leave he's not currently there anymore uh, likely to move to Manchester United now Laurie Whitwell went on to say Jason Wilcox is expected to engage daily with the Man United manager to provide a link to the hierarchy he will be also a bridge between the youth setup and the first team tapping into the work he did as an academy director at Manchester City of course we know he was a uh, head of academy he and he was a technical director and then he became the football director at Southampton it looks like he's going to be the technical director at Man United worked directly with Omar Barada and under Dan Ashworth this one guys I'm not going to lie it doesn't really excite me I'm not really overly excited by Jason Wilcox I'm not going to lie. Um, you know, do I really want Man United to, ha you know, be Brexit FC with Ashworth, Jason Wilcox, potentially still Darren Fletcher, um, and, you know, Southgate or Graham Potter? No. Um, uh, has Wilcox done a good job at Southampton? I don't think he's been there long enough. He got good decent money for for lavia but I, I don't think he's been responsible for anything else that southampton have developed there what has he done at man city you know worked with the academy they've sold players as well they haven't really brought many players through their academy um you know they've sold them well and they they've had good players come to there maybe he's done decent work there i'm not overly i'm not going to lie you guys and say i really really want him i would have preferred other other people to him but you know is he better than darren fletcher i'd take him over darren fletcher but i mean should that be the should that be the the, the why we should bring him in no I mean, I, I've heard so many people talk about players in the past. Get him, he's better than, you know, than Freddie McTominay. And I'm always saying, we shouldn't just, that shouldn't be the benchmark. So because someone is better than Darren Fletcher shouldn't just mean we should go for him. Uh, again, I'm not overly enamored by Wilcox, um, but it is what it is and, and we'll see. But the rumour is that Fletcher will, will be staying on. Strefford Paddock came out this evening and said, Jason Wilcox's arrival would mean a recalibration of responsibilities and a new job title for, for Darren Fletcher. I'm going to say no immediately to that as well. I don't agree with that either. Darren Fletcher should be relieved of his duties. I don't care. That he's a former Man United player. He's liked behind the scenes because uh, apparently Andy Mitten said that. I don't. I couldn't give a shit. Ali, they loved Ali. I didn't. I, it doesn't matter. Um, Darren Fletcher has failed at Man United, um, and it's been far skill. Other than a bit of nepotism and bringing his fucking twins to Man United for a lot of money from the fucking City Academy, that should tell you alone that he didn't. His own kids weren't even in the Man United Academy. Boy, get out of here. Um, nobody actually knows. No one has a fucking clue. He was supposed to be getting involved with the coaching when Rangnick was there. Then he was supposed to stay on as a coach. But then he was doing punditry during the Euros or, what, or the World Cup or whenever that on, was on. And it was during the summer. And I was thinking, what's Darren Fletcher there? Is he not supposed to actually be working at Man United to try and sign players during this transfer window as a technical director? Um... I, I, I don't believe he is because a, a, I don't know all the options out there. You don't know all the options out there. So to say he's better than all of the options out there, I don't think is actually true. Um, so I will respectfully disagree with that. But uh, Romano said, I can guarantee you once Wilcox uh, will be the new technical director of Manchester United, the agreement between Wilcox and Man United is in place um, and he has informed Southampton of his desire to join Man United. It is no time to understand the compensation fee, fee and the gardening leave, but he's already resigned. So it looks like it doesn't matter what I think, what you think, Wilcox is going to come in and he'll have his work cut out from him. And trust me, I'll be judging him. I'll be fucking, I'm side dying all these frauds all these Ineos men all these men they're going to bring in all these sport, um, footballing structure people on the structural side because as well um just because they've done decent jobs at other clubs doesn't mean they're going to do decent jobs at Man United because let's be honest at the crux of all of this who still owns this football club the Glazers um the Glazers do so you know um I won't be holding my breath guys 
they laugh they still have a lot of convincing last story up before i go if you haven't already liked the video please like the video please subscribe if you are new of course i'll be late tomorrow for our preview of that liverpool game oh my god but casemiro looks like casemiro might not be fit for the Liverpool game. Looks like Man United could be out uh, without seven first team players going into that big, big game at the weekend. Eric Ten Hag uh, basically said Casemiro had to come off against Chelsea. Um, uh, and, you know, he said the substitute didn't help the team. I mean, I would have hooked Casemiro off to 20 minutes. But anyway, he said we had to bring Casemiro out. It doesn't help the team like this we need to keep those kind of players in so we we'll have to wait and see on Casemiro there's no been no real update but he said he had to take him out because of an injury we also lost um Varane and Evans did uh, I remember Saka get stitches he uh you know uh, we lost Martinez and Lindelof for a month as well uh, Luke Shaw is still out injured. No sign of Terrell Malassia. He's been the he's the new invisible man since Mount has come back. So um, it looks like you know Casemiro is playing with an injury. I don't necessarily believe that because yes, he was injured before international duty, um, but he he's come back in since then. I just think he's finished. I absolutely think he's finished. His legs have gone. I also think his head has been turned and he doesn't want to stay here. Uh, to be honest, if Casemiro was injured, I don't really think he's any big loss. Uh, guys, I I, t I couldn't give a shit at this stage. If if he's out, he's out. He won't be missed because he's been tragic this season, Casemiro. Um, I actually think, you know, I'd rather probably play Mason Mount in there. I, and I know I can't believe I'm saying that. But would Mount do a worse job or would Amorbat do a worse job? After what I witnessed from Casemiro last night, uh, uh, I'm not sure. I'm not sure. But, you know, he, he missed a lot of the season already um, with an injury. He picked up, a, was he out for a month or two uh, earlier on in the season? He was injured before the international break and, and has only just come back and it looks like he could be injured again. Fucking hell. Uh, a one-season wonder. And I'm going to say that is a, that is actually a push because we signed Casemiro, we announced him at, was it during that Liverpool game or, you know, and he didn't come in after we lost 6-3 against Man City in September. He missed eight Premier League games as well through suspension. Um, so he didn't play a lot of games last season, Casemiro. I think he only played 24 or 26 Premier League games in totality. So he was it wasn't even one full season um we got about 16 world-class games for him and in actual fact that's kind of off the top of my head i'd have to go back and check so it was about a quarter of a season uh shout out to the shield for gifting a membership you know you'll always be crazy irish man to me um for gifting a she devils membership if you've got the she devils gifted thank the shield in the chat um hey mary and all in the chat shout out to the shield um well that is a good point for Milius. That's probably who will play. And again, that's another failing of Everton Hag. He's loving with the likes of Scott McTominay. Uh, uh, but to be fair, some people would say Oli loved him. Jose loved him. And previous managers did. So it's not just Everton Hag. Eriksen could be leaving in the summer. And I hope that Onana is not a United player next season. Um, he... He man is in with his shield. Yes, I love it. Shout out to the shield. Uh, Real Madrid don't sell uh, good players. No, that it's like Bayern Munich. They don't sell players unless they're past their prime or they've no more use for them. It's a hint. You know, they sold us for Anne and this, and I and I like Ran and I loved Casemiro last season, but you know. Uh, he would at least give more energy, absolute facts. He would have the legs in there. I don't think he's you know great the defensive side certainly um i would probably oh, i'm about has been so bad i'm not sure i would play him um it, it, it's interesting we it's one for the 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 match reaction oh, sorry the the preview tomorrow night who would we actually play in the midfield um because uh, you know i'm tempted to say menu amrabat and mount You know, I'm tempted. Uh, I, I'm mounting the 10, obviously, instead of Bruno. Uh, I just want May to arrive and end the season. I, I know we're still in the, the FA Cup, but, like, realistically, no, Chelsea could beat City, but Chelsea beat us last night. Are we winning the FA Cup, guys? I know anything can happen. I'd end the season right now. If you said to me, Mary, would you end the season? I would end it right now. I'd end it. 
I would absolutely end it. Uh, uh, end it right now, immediately. Immediately, I would end it. I, uh, I just, I, I don't even care. I don't care about the FA Cup. I don't. I genuinely don't care about any of these games coming up. Uh, end it. Um, Bruno, yeah, he isn't. I would drop him, but yeah, I, I agree. He's not going to get dropped. Uh, yeah, yeah, that's the fucking thing. He's been dro- like dross. Absolute joy or. Then you're left with McTominay, you know. That that that's the thing. You could play Mount Bruno and Menu, but I think we will get massively exposed as well. Um, in there, unless you play Bruno in the eight, you'd have a game like Real Betis. But Bruno's just not been playing well this season, so I don't know, guys. Uh, who knows? I, I don't think regardless of who plays in there, we get beat, we get beaten anyway. But guys, I am going to go if you're watching the replay, get in with all your thoughts on everything discussed. Please like the video if you haven't already. Please subscribe if you're new. Keep a lock to sheet, Evans. I'll be live tomorrow, and of course, I'll be live straight after the Liverpool game. Go and have, try and have a good uh weekend, guys. Enjoy your weekend, whatever you're doing, and I'll check you on the next one. Take care, folks. Bye, all.